Okay, welcome to our fifth and final uh, video of our on-site house. Um, today we're going to be having a look at, and I'll just, as usual, track back and have a bit of a look at the site overall. Today we're going to be looking at roof framing in particular for our on-site house. You can see where the roof has gone on for the single-story version of the house. And um, we've also, in this version of it, through the magic of... Uh, digital work we managed to turn the white bricks into conventional red bricks um, but they're all in the same location and they're, they're, they're still doing the same function um, there's a few a bit of a variation that you see in the interior of the garage you can see that they've made it all brick construction and then some brick piers which are acting as the structural members to stiffen the uh, the, um, the the walls of the building itself but essentially it's roofs that we're roof framing and roof practice that we're interested in uh, today so we'll, I'll move back and we'll have a little bit of a look at what we've got here. Alright you can see from the site itself and you'll be able to have seen from the drawings as well that uh, what we have here is a combination of a hip roof uh, with uh, some valley framing as well. The hip is that line where, let's bring the cursor up where you can see that the squared off end of the uh, of the living room here uh, has an even uh, front which is the same height as the gutter which means the gutter is at the same height all the way around. Um, an alternative would be for a gable end for example on that uh, particular northern face and in that instance again I'll bring the cursor up the ridge would have run all the way through to here and you would have had a flat gable. Uh, this isn't common uh, in uh, domestic housing construction in the project home market because it costs just a little bit more in terms of of a um, in terms of uh, timber and so and also there's an added complexity in terms of guttering. Uh, what you have when you have hip uh, roofs such as this is the gutters can run continually around the uh, perimeter of the building. So we have a hip and valley uh, association here. Alright, so let's go in and let's have a little bit of a look at what we've got in terms of the roof framing itself. Now we're spending a little bit of time talking about this, but we can see in the first instance that what we have here is a set of trusses, okay, which are running east-west uh, across the breadth of the living area, and some conventional uh, roof framing as well. There's a girder truss in there, which and a bit of jack truss, which picks up some of the extra framing but essentially it's uh, a mixture of uh, uh, what in conventional roofing is called rafters uh, and purlins. Okay, The rafters are the beams which run from the ridge to the perimeter of the building at right angles and the purlins, you can just look at the cursor, the purlins run uh, parallel uh, with the end of the uh, of the building Okay, and are at centres which are sufficiently small to allow the roof sheeting to sit on top of it. Roof systems like uh, wall framing systems are uh, part of an organised set of relationships and so um, the, as the light timber framing code tells us, you know, for certain sizings of rafters you need purlins have to span certain distances and so there's a ratio between the size of the bamba and its spanning, its ability to span a distance. And most roof framing uh, is a balance between those two. Um, now we have a few words to say at the end towards issues about where, where the uh, what we can see here at the moment. But for the moment, time being, we can see that it's a fairly conventional roof uh, taking place up uh, within it. The truss that you can see here, outlined in blue, is what you would call a main truss, meaning that it um, uh, spans uh, uh, the two kind of the top cord, the top portion of the uh, truss that you can see here, okay, that runs from the plate height all the way up to the ridge, uh, is doing the same job as a normal rafter uh, would do. But because it's part of a truss system, you can see there's little connectors that connect these members that span in between the, as I said, the top cord up here, and the bottom cord, which is essentially where the ceiling is. The members that span in between is called the web, okay. And together, all of the components of the, uh, the cords and the web make up a, a truss. 
okay so it's important to know that in if you go to do some bit of a, a literature search or look online for various trust types you'll see other versions which are used uh, which are sort of half forms uh, things like as I said Goethe trusses and Jack trusses are common in the construction industry what we're looking at uh, in this one here where the cursor is touching that's essentially a Goethe truss okay or sorry a Jack truss because it's um, doesn't run to the same height as the main truss but instead is um, picking up the roof that's falling in an opposite direction okay now the trusses that are being used here um, why use trusses and why not use just normal uh, roof framing well essentially because they're part of a system they uh, you the manufacturers of them can optimize the size of the, the materials being used so you can end up getting a lot more efficiency in terms of the volume of timber or, or it is timber it's not wood wood is what goes on a fire timber what's used in construction but the volume of timber that's used to do perform a certain task for example if i want to have a ceiling uh, joist that spanned the length of where this blue truss is from there all the way across to here you have to be considerably larger piece of timber okay and that would be more expensive uh, it would still need to be kind of tied up to the ridge probably in some fashion um, for stability and uh, would be as I said, expensive difficult to put in place because it's so much heavier and um, when you multiply that across the entire roof um, you can see why there's a value in having the trusses uh, there's also the value in having pre-manufactured trusses in as much as they're done off-site so there's a quality control which means they can all be consistent and because uh, essentially yes they're easy easy to put up all right um, so this is our roof uh, if you have a look at as I said it in conjunction with the drawings you'll be able to see that um, it obeys a particular pitch um, you would know possibly uh, from looking at uh, uh, drawings but also possibly looking at way in which uh, a program like Revit for example might or uh, Archicad might do a roof is that, uh, that it's very important you keep a consistent pitch uh, in a roof because that would allow the uh, transformation for a plane from one direction to the other okay if you can imagine if this main part of the roof, you can see where the cursor is touching, if that's on 22 and a half degrees, but you, for whatever design reasons, decide that the portion of the roof over the garage needs to be at a higher pitch, you're going to have a break in the roof here. Okay, where it's very, very difficult to, to cater with, cater to structurally. So generally, um, in designing a roof, you'll have a consistent pitch, uh, or you at least think about how pitches might might work. Um, we haven't talked too much more about the uh, the interior. We can see as we look around that uh, there's a little bit more to be done yet. There's the lining to be placed on the eaves uh, which you can look at. Some of the windows and the window framing is in place. Um, if we come around to the, the western edge we can see that again all of the framing is in place there. They haven't placed the sheeting on uh, yet and we'll look at that in a minute but uh, the work is progressing uh, pretty nicely okay so we we'll just walk around again to the front here and we can come and have a look at some of the some of the materials on the ground we've got some extra roof sheeting that needs to go up okay and we can tell uh, from the roof sheeting if we come back and have a look at it uh, at the profile up here or even if we swing around to this side you can see the roof sheeting we can see that it's got a kind of dull metallic uh, color now I would probably and that it's got a profile okay that is so I come back that you can see is this kind of sinusoidal waveform right now that's a very common profile some people just think it is normal roofing tin but it's called um, custom all that's the name of it um, and the material finish is zinc alum, okay, which means that it's essentially it has a you know rust retardant in it, but it doesn't uh, have a particular colour finished. If you um, wanted a particular colour, certainly when you come to the Lysart or catalog, catalog, that's what they term colour bond, 
okay so a roof has when you talk about a roof a roof has a profile and a finish okay so this is a custom roof with a zinc alone finish in this instance if we want it to be cream for example it would be a custom orb profile but with a whatever a sea drift I think is one of them a color bond finish so that's one of the ways in which you distinguish between the difference between material and profile okay roofs sheeting comes in a variety of different profiles um, this is very common in domestic use in commercial use you might have things like trim deck and, and other profiles which are designed to be um, span longer areas and to be quite uh, quite cost efficient but are not generally used in, in domestic construction principally for aesthetic reasons alright so coming inside uh, we need to have a look at what's going on here in terms of the finish uh, in the interior and you'll notice that when we look up we can see that there's a sort of dull metallic sheen on the underside of uh, uh, of the the roof itself that's not the underside of the sheeting that's actually what's called sarking and sarking is a, uh, a weather resistant uh, so insulation lining okay it gives you a little bit of insulation relief um, which um, generally runs in between the rafters or the top cord of the trusses and the purlins okay in this instance instance when we look up we can see the purlins which means that the sarking is on top of the purlins and underneath the roof sheeting and this is a problem it's a problem because a couple of reasons one because if you can imagine uh, when you're trying to put uh, the sheeting the sarking on you want to be able to hold it down in place and generally the purlins then sit on top of the uh, the sarking and then the roof sheeting sits on top of the purlins running the opposite direction of course so that's just something to note and as we've seen in previous uh, uh, previous examples there are kind of little niggles and little mistakes that need to be to be worked out okay and again this wouldn't be a difficult problem to solve the builder would just have to take the roof sheeting off actually would be quite a difficult problem to solve. You have to take the roof sheeting off and then you'd have to take the purlins off and reinstall the sarking underneath uh, the purlins. Okay, so that's uh, that's an important thing to, to pick up. Alright, so the rest of it all looks uh, pretty state, really kind of ship shape. And so we just come back and take a, a last look at the, uh, the, the work in progress itself. And we can see it's all looking fairly good. Alright, so as I said, this is the last of the videos. Hopefully you found it uh, interesting and informative and you've learned something uh, about construction and seen, uh, I guess, the building site as it in a reasonably credible fashion would look uh, if you were to, to wander about and have a look at the way in which things get put up. Now, what you'll probably realise if you've ever been onto a build so building site is that there will be differences, there will be variations, there are slightly different ways of doing things which might be because of cost or just uh, habit or, or, or design uh, there's nothing kind of set in stone but most of them follow a fairly uh, general pattern anyway so thank you for watching hope you enjoyed this and uh, hope I'll see you some other time cheers <laughs>